anything bad to say about Mark. He's the sweetest man. He's eminently capable of what he does, and he made freaking Voltron. So you know, form blades of sword. Uh, he's a and and, and uh, he has an interesting life. He takes some time off and travels through Asia, and just lives like a gentleman. Yeah, and he's super super positive. Yeah, you know, and then this business, I think, you know, it's it's exciting, but it can also be a little bit crushing. And he's just a super sweet, positive guy. I think that's really, really uh, inspiring. Mm -hmm. And what a great achievement! Yeah. <laughs> right over here. Um, I just want to know what are the challenges of making um, directing a short uh, anime series like thirteen, maybe mm -hmm. twenty-six, as opposed to a long twenty series? Short sure, when you have less research. <laughs> yeah. Well, then character development is something else where, yeah. and honestly, with, with it, a long series, you know, you need to take your time, and, yeah. and, and, and sometimes that can be more of a challenge, because sometimes you feel like you want to go to a place right away, because you know you're going to end up there, but you got to, yeah. you need it's to slow burn, slow burn on a longer series. Yeah, and a lot of that, I think, might even reflect in the writing, uh, yeah. more so, you know. Yeah. It's, you, you've got to be, in a, on a shorter series, especially as a writer, you've got to be more concise. You've, you've got to, you know, you still want to tell the story in the, the fashion that they needed to, but you've got, I mean, Dreamy were Mary was 13 episodes, and we had to make every episode count. Um, and, and you want to do that in a long series too, but shorter time, you've got less time to tell that story. So, <coughs> so else, I hate picking people. I'm always wanting to get to do that, so thank you. I don't know uh, you can have a greater hatred for the shows, too. Um, yeah, yeah, sometimes. I mean, you, 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 yeah, you get into it on such a deeper level, and you're looking for different things than actors would. When you're an actor, in, in general, when you're an actor on a, uh, like an anime program that we've worked on, all you see is your lines. That's it. Now, not, it's not that you don't know anything else about the project, especially if the director's doing the research. They'll fill you in on things, you know. Yeah. But really... you got to get an active context. Yeah, but really you're only seeing your little part of the thing. Um, you know, I, I did a series uh, that I, as an actor, Icky Tosin, mm -hmm. and I played this hot tongue, the guy who's got an eye passion, and, you know... Then, you know, and I did my part, and we laid down whatever 13 episode season was, and then later on they're like, <coughs> excuse me, can you go back in and fill in some incidentals, a couple of little bit parts, and here's all this stuff with like panties and boobs and jokes, and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, all my guy did was like sit and cry and get hurt and be, you know, I mean, because he was just, it, it, things weren't good for him, and I'm like, this show's funny, and they're like, yeah. yeah. The same thing happened on Soccer Diaries, I went in and... And you know, my character kept going, yeah, we're gonna go play baseball. Hey, yeah, let's go play baseball. Let's, let's go play baseball. And I sat down with the other actors to do a commentary. And I had assumed it was about kids in high school and baseball and taking tests, because that's all we had done. And no, the, the cousins were in love with each other. And it was, and so I sat down to do this commentary, not knowing anything about it. And I was like, what is going on? And I, it, literally, the entire commentary for Soccer Diaries is me freaking out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but again, like to answer the other part of the question, you have to, as a director, I mean, you will, you will often find um, little nuanced things that you can kind of latch onto, or things that you really enjoy in a series, because you're, you are working on the series when you're a director, whereas when you're an actor, you're often just working on the character. You know what I mean? Uh, but being that you have more responsibility, if if you have horrible deadlines and things like that, you also like want to shoot yourself when you see the program shows. The, the drawback, that, the real drawback that I found, I don't know whether any of the rest of you feel this way, but like, I tend to be one of the, the directors at Sentai that is willing to work a 12 hour shift with a one hour meal break. I'll, I'll burn through three engineers a day. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I love working so much. But when I spend 11 hours watching nothing but anime, as much as I enjoy anime and as much as I love it, when I go home, if an animated commercial comes on, I get up and leave the room. I, I really do. I, I find myself 
really unable to watch a lot of stuff. Now, if Mike were to call up and say, hey, I've got this that I've done, it's going to be on tonight, watch it. Uh, when uh, Maxi first, when they first did Brotherhood, and Maxi first appeared, Mike was like, hey, we've got this whole really love thing to check out. Of course I will. But if it's on my own, I'm keeping it on the science channel. Or something like that. There's also the danger of uh, watching too many things that have been dubbed and localized and then getting all kinds of strange sentence structures stuck in your head and thinking, oh, that's some people say, what the, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. I know I have started saying I, what the. But I, I, like, hate the what the thing, yeah. but my kids will say it. Yeah. You know, they do. And it really, and my kids are also not thinking, like, what the F, because that's one of the reasons why on the TV networks, um, which for children's programming, don't want you to say what the, because they think it suggests what the fuck. Um, oh, okay. but, uh, I'm hey, I'm not. Most of you are adults, if not all of you, so you can hear that. But, like, and I know that my kids aren't going there, I don't think. Maybe they are, I don't know. But, but yeah, but they do say that, which is weird, because I'm always like, nobody actually says this, but I guess no one over the age of nine. Yeah, I think that uh, definitely actors who are directors, I think we do have a greater appreciation for it, to go back to what your specific question was, because we understand how much it takes uh, to make it really happen. When we're just acting, I don't want to say just like acting is something important. It is. But you go in and you don't even have to react off of other people. It's a different kind of acting job entirely. So I feel that I do have a greater appreciation, at least for the shows that I've worked on, because I know them inside and out. Yeah. You know, there are some shows that I have been in that I know are great shows. I haven't even seen them all. Yeah. And I don't know what so-and-so said to me in that scene. But, um, yeah, I love the things that I've worked on. Yeah, I've like, not loved anything that I've not loved. Yeah. Right there? Um, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see or hear something that an actor is in, and it'll stick in your head, and then a character, like, because in Pokemon, I mean, you know, there's only, like, a billion episodes, and then two billion guest characters, so, you know, every now and then I'll see something, and I'll be like, oh, man, like, um, there was an episode where there was this old, you know, precocious little annoying kid thing going on. And a guy had just sent me a thing that he had done, which was, it was almost like a little, like, radio play kind of thing, and that voice was on there, and it was really good, like, that kind of character. And I'm like, oh, I'm totally using this guy for this. So, yeah, I mean, I'll take that stuff into account. I mean, that's the other thing is, you know, it's, it's just casting. I'm like, I'm trying to make sure that I'm going to get the best talent for the part. So, every now and then, you know, I will, like, say, if I was working with Chris Harris, and Chris, let's say Chris generally plays, like, angry guys. I know Chris is a good actor. I might do him against that type yeah. because I know he can pull it off. I but, love that yeah, but I mean, but very often, especially when you have deadlines, you know, the whole typecasting thing, I mean, that's for a reason. It's like, well, I need someone who's going to be really funny. Oh, right well, now. Erica Schroeder is really, really funny, so I know that I can just put her in there and she'll hit a home run. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you end up doing it that way. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, the secret. I was like, oh no, you know one of my undisclosed future projects that I may not speak about under non-disclosure? No, it's Zellos, and everything's a secret. Thank you, Marcus. That's a cool question. Why did you pick the first Yeah, wait, right there? Oh, sorry. Um, it depends. I'd say that if the studio can afford to uh, not just get the license to dub the music, but also to pay someone to adapt it, to pay an engineer to record it, a director to record it, a singer to sing it, another engineer to mix it, all of that, if they can afford that, um, then usually we'll, we'll try and do it. Um, I, I personally like, as a director, and like I love anime, and I love songs yeah. in Japanese. 
But I think if you're going to watch a show in English, why not make it English top to bottom? And make yeah. it words that you can sing along and actually know what you're saying. Yeah. And it could just be because I'm a singer, but I also enjoy that aspect of it. But whenever I could, on shows that I directed, I'd say, let's up the music. Yes. Absolutely. And oh. especially music within the show. 